traveled across the country from South Dakota to none other than Belleville, Ohio, home of Steadfast. And this is my friend, Henry Richards. We got introduced through Jeremy Senior at Lucky Strike Design. In Daytona, we're sitting there chatting one day about carbon fiber and maybe good, maybe bad, all these things, right? And we started talking about, I, I feel it flexing when I'm going in a big sweeper and I'm really cranking on it. And there's plenty of curvy roads in your, in your country here, right. right? And so you said, I'd really like to build as much of a raw metal bagger as I can, because I'm a metal guy. Yep. And uh, you'll see that in the cars, you'll see it in what we're showing you here. I sent you a fender, you cut it down to your shape and you sent it back to me and I said, this is what people want, I'm gonna produce it and we're gonna call it the Henry. So now you know that's where the Henry Fender comes from. This is Henry, behind the Henry Fender. So, so Jeremy disappears one day. I think he's in here using the bathroom. <laughs> like seriously, what an idiot. This is emotional for me. Thought I could just do this really simple. It's not gonna be that simple, Shelton, sorry. There's a gentleman by the name of Howard Russell from Kansas City and, and uh, my ex-wife Laura and I were down there speaking at a church thing. I came out and uh, a guy said to me, he goes, hey, I loved your passion in there. Uh, you said you had your first ever car. I said, I do. I got it when I was 16 years old. It's a 1970 Chevelle SS 396. I turned people down. My dad would call me and say, hey, Brian, this guy's offering enough money to pay your whole college tuition. I'm like, I know dad, but it's my car. I don't want to be that guy who came in the shop and we're changing oil, we're fixing a tire. And it's like, I remember I had a 69 Charger. I wish I would've kept that one. I remember I had this, a 64, 409. I wish I would've kept that, my dad would say. And people just don't do it. And so I didn't wanna be that guy. And so I still have my 1970 Chevelle. But getting back to Howard, Howard walked up and he goes, I have my first ever car. I said, okay, lay your trump card down. It's gotta be cooler than mine. He goes, it's a 1934 Plymouth. He said, uh, me and my buddy, took an old flathead motor out of the trees. His mom wrecked a car and we went ahead and put that motor in here. I paid $12 for this paint and I painted it myself. Thing I'm sad about Brian is that I, uh, I uh, put in Volkswagen taillights. I wish I wouldn't have done that. He said, uh, but they're in there really good. We used lead, we leaded them in. <laughs> so the body works amazing. T taillights off of Volkswagen. And the whole time I've had this car, Bernie Maxwell, Aaron's dad, said, hey, Brian, I'd, I'd love to get that thing running. He got it running, put the brakes, fixed the brakes on it, and drove it around West Indian Springs for a whole summer in South Dakota. Fast forward and I met Henry. And I saw these chassis and I saw the things, and then he took me for a ride in one of his cars. Had all the stance, had all the handling, had all the cool you could possibly want. And I thought, if I can't ever afford anything, I would love to have Henry build me a chassis for this thing. But there was one little caveat. Uh, I wanted a poly motor in it, an old Chrysler 318 polyspherical motor that they made in the 50s. And I talked to John Jackson and I talked to Del Lushenko at Delmo Speed, and I told them both, I wanna meet this guy named Eric Black, cause he draws stuff and gives it the stance so he can put it in my head what it's gonna look like when Henry gets done. He did it. And I said to him, I explained, I said, but you don't understand. And he goes, no, I do understand. One of my best friends had a 34 Plymouth. He got this girlfriend. She didn't want him to do nothing with his car friends anymore. He let go of that 34. So while we talked about it and dreamed about it, it was never gonna get done. So I'm gonna live vicariously through you, Brian, and I hope you finish your car. I said, well, here's the weird thing about me. I wanna use this poly motor. And he goes, no way. My friend wants to use a poly motor. That was the whole idea. So he was behind it 100%. I'm looking forward to connecting with my good friend, Matt Graves, who got me into the whole Cherry Bomb thing, in case you've ever seen my Cherry Bomb bike or the 65 Cherry Bomb Cadillac. And Matt Graves now works for a company that all they do is sell Tremec five speeds. So we're hoping to get a Tremec five speed behind this bad boy, behind that poly motor. Henry's got a guy, everybody's got a guy, everybody's got a good relationship. And all of these relationships and all these connections are gonna make what we call the how weird even more special. The reason it's called How Weird is because Howard said, I wanna do this car. I said, well, I got some friends in the hot rod industry, but it's just, it's not what I do, right? I gave him my card. He wrote his number and name on one of my cards, which at the time was white on the back. Years go by and all of a sudden I'm messing around on my desk and I dump off this whole pile of cards on the floor. There's Howard's card laying face up, phone numbers right at me. 
So I picked up the phone. I said, Howard, this is Brian Clock. I hope you and your wife, Karina, are doing great. Um, I know we haven't talked in a while. I saw it was a God thing. I wanted to call you and say hello. About an hour later, he calls me back and he said, hey, young man, why don't you come get that car? I said, Howard, I don't have the money for that car. He said, I didn't ask you for any money. I asked you to come get my car. I said, I'm sure your son or your daughter, somebody's going to want that car. He goes, listen, I go to the barber. The barber's a motorcycle guy. He's got magazines laying there. I pick up the magazines while I'm waiting for to get my hair cut. And I see what you're doing in your community. I see what you're doing in the motorcycle industry. And I want you to have this car. You'll tell a great story with it. It's been sitting outside. It's under a tarp. The brakes might be locked up on it. But next time you're in town, come see me. We had a speaking engagement at the church. Laura was speaking, uh, telling her I'm second story. And Howard invited us to the house. We rounded up all the little neighbor kids and had them push because the wheels and brakes were locked up. And we got up onto the trailer with all these little kids' help. And my guys had kept saying, don't you think it's weird, Brian? Don't you think it's weird, Brian? Don't you think it's weird, Brian? Nobody's going to give you a good solid car. It's going to be a rusted Hulk. I said, yeah, but the guy respected me enough to give me the rusted Hulk. Whatever it is, I'm going to go get it. Well, this is whatever it is. Fast forward to this car being a little weird. Howard, how weird? Maybe. Boom, here comes John Jackson, not stock photography. Introduced me to Jeremy Senior, Lucky Strike Designs, who introduced me to Henry Richards of Stentfast. So every one of those dots is connected. And even this drawing about how we're going to take off these wire wheels, add some art artillery wheels, give it that steadfast Henry stance. And Eric Black said, you know, this should be black. This body line is what makes a 34 Plymouth a 34 Plymouth. So he gave it the stance, he gave it the look. And stay tuned. Let's, it'll be exciting to see what happens, huh, Henry? Yeah, and Eric, if you're watching this, <laughs> like that, baby. <laughs> Always everybody got to have a tip on something. Eric, I never thought I'd be able to even afford to have this piece of art done by you. Um, you have an eye for design and a timeless style. And when you told me, why not the artillery wheels? Leave the top, leave everything, just give it a stance. All I could think was Henry at Steadfast. It's at Steadfast MFG, right? Yep. Steadfast Manufacturing. There's no dashes or anything in there, right? Just all one? Uh, at Steadfast MFG on Instagram. Okay. okay, Steadfast MFG on Instagram, and you'll see this 69 Camaro, and it will explode your brain. Henry looked at this Camaro completely different than anybody's looked at a Camaro, okay? Widen the front fenders how far? So about two and a half inches per side. And so suddenly this car just goes takes on these muscles. Roadster shop chassis, and big still, wide wheels and tires. Yeah, and it's still got the body line in there, you know, that makes a 69 a 69. Thing was just, whew, I mean, mind blowing. Uh, as we were talking earlier, you got obsessed with that car. Yeah, I got, we all grasp at something. It can be, right. it can be alcohol, it can be drugs, it can be bikes. I mean, there was one time I had six, seven bikes sitting there. Yeah, yep. I could only ride yep. one at a time, believe it or not. Yep. So I just, have that problem right now. Yeah, but I'm thinking about it all the way here. We're not meant to be fulfilled by those things. So that car, you take that a step back. That car was my dream car. Like literally not a 69 Camaro, but that particular car. Yeah. My dad painted that car with his dad when I was a little kid. Oh, it belonged wow. to his best friend. His best friend would come to the shop, give me rides in it. And you I tried it getting back. that car multiple times. And yeah, that, it was one of those things. I got the car back and I, I was so like submerged in that car. Yeah. It's like, I didn't look up, I, you know. Yeah, and, and taking and, time and away suddenly, from family, taking lose, time away from of your daughter, losing sight of what's yep. important to you and what you want to really do. That that hit me probably yeah about a month before Jordan. I quit working on it, and when I was over there and I seen the bigger grand yeah. scheme of things, yeah. it was like that car's got to go. Yeah, and so now, will you get to finish it because it belongs to one of your customers? Yeah, I'll get to finish it for one of my here. customers okay. for sure. Yeah. All right. So we'll take a look around here a little bit and uh, have him explain some of the projects to us uh, because. Not everybody gets up on this little hill in Belleville and uh, this shop is amazing. So take a look around, check it out. So this is a 32 Ford Roadster pickup. We're building for Noel Irvin at, out of Houston, Texas. Basically building a truck that we can take out and maybe contend for the Amber. Whoa. Said maybe. Um, I know, but that's-, that's I've, never, I've never seen a truck win the Amber. Yeah, There's been a couple well, good that, trucks out there. So uh, that might- might okay, not check all he, the boxes, but... Guys, when he's talking about Amber, it's America's most beautiful roadster. 
Okay, that means this is a Roadster pickup. That's the caveat. But to step in that ring, there's eight to 10 contenders, maybe 14 contenders ever, right, yep. a year. And it's a serious deal. It happens in Pomona, California at the so Grand National Roadster Show. do not have a hometown advantage. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no advantage. I mean, you come in there and you have a book, you have to tell the story. I mean, they're looking at how the bolts are clocked, no pun intended, on the bottom of these things. And it's all about the details. Yep. So to even think like that puts this truck over the top. It's got to be special. Yep. It's got to speak to somebody. Bed's been being made from scratch, stake pockets, uh, tailgates, double thick, arched. So everything's been being so normally it made been from flat. scratch. Yeah. So just explain that detail to us. Yeah, okay. normally that tailgate would be straight and it's got a subtle arch, changes thickness. We um, designed, you know, the tailgate hinges, and then they have an internal stop built in. So about every square inch of that so thing has been of that thought out and overthought. How does that happen? It just happens. So Alloway said some people are blessed with it. He looks at it more as a curse. <laughs> <laughs> because you just can't, can't quit. Can't quit thinking about it. You know, I, I've talked to the Ring Brothers before at SEMA, and I said, you know, the problem I always had with motorcycles is when do you stop? Because you can, you can take every cool part, every cool idea, and throw it at that one. And they told me about 80 85%, you should have just quit. Yeah. I, I think it's hard. the key to becoming a good builder is in knowing just because you can don't mean you have to. Yeah. And like you said, you pull out. At some point, you pull out and you save it for the next one because you yeah. can overbuild a car. Yeah, you can overdo a motorcycle. You can do overdo anything. Yep. Just because you can have access to all those built pieces, don't put them all on there. Just because yep. you have access to all the metal ideas, don't throw them all at this one, right? Yep. It's got to work together from front to back. You, I mean, you can part. have access to the best pinstriper in the world. Doesn't mean you have to pinstripe it. <laughs> Sorry, Jeremy. Yeah, that was Jeremy <laughs> Cener all the way. That was a friendly jab right there. Did you feel that one? Oh, you got to stripe oh, it all. Got it, right. But the beauty of it is it's like writing music, right? There's only so many notes, but only so many people can write hit songs. Some people can be one-hit wonders. Some people can do it hit after hit after hit, and they become the Rolling Stones, or they become some long-standing band that's stuck together. And that's a hard thing to do, you know, because... Sometimes I imagine even in here, like maybe your employees don't always agree with your vision, right? Yep. Then you fire them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> I'm just That's kidding. Deal. But the beauty of it is, um, you know, it, you have to cast that vision. Yep. And then, then all of a sudden, maybe it leads to a better idea yep. or an even better collaboration. Because again, it, it goes back to the community we were already talking about. Yep. And I, what I've noticed is like, yeah, my one helper, Robbie, we have so much fun going back and forth. Yeah. Like that's what keeps me excited. Keeps you excited. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, what if we do this? And then he'll, well, I was looking at it. What if we do this? And then we go back and forth. Yeah. And that usually makes the best parts, yeah. not just my parts, yeah. not just his parts, but our collaborating and that's parts. What, that's why they're steadfast. The parts. Henry Fender. Yeah. The Henry Fender. Right. It was, it was that the collaboration. Started, yeah. It started out at Daytona talking about, could we build all steel bagger? What would that look like to us? Yep. And then you said, I said, well, let's start with one of my fenders. I'll send you the fender. And you're like, you know, you're almost afraid that I'm going to be offended that you're going to cut it up. Right. And then you sent it to me and I said, okay, now here, here's the problem. You got to make another one because <laughs> I'm going to send this one. My guys are going to scan it. We're going to put it in our stuff and it became a part. And now it's one of our top three selling fenders. And so every time I see uh, Josh at uh, the factory match or the fairing exchange post up that he just paint matched a Henry Fender, it makes me smile because <laughs> that's what you want to do is you want to get on the podium. You want to celebrate with your friends. Don't stand up there by yourself. It ain't worth it. Get everybody up there and, and have a real party if you're going to have a party, yep. you know, so. All right. So Amber truck. Wow. Amber Roadster pickup. Okay. Tell me about this guy. 33, four. Yeah, so this is and a... And the reason you know that, just for all of us uneducated hot rod people, is this grill shell, right? That's That slope, that kick out at the bottom is 33, 34. But tell me about this car. This was a car that just came up for sale at an auction. And we, um, the same guy that owns that truck, picked this one here up. And we're just kind of building a fun, somewhat slapped together hot rod, nothing super over the top. Jeremy's going to come up. We're going to do a full flame job on this, kind of pull off that alloy feel. Right on. And, and the so alloy feel, those, those 
flames yep. uh, are certain. Th there's Ohio flames, there's regular flames, there's traditional flames, there's all these things. And Bobby Alloway's cars from have the a, nose have, to the taillights. Yeah, they, they have a stretch to them and it yep. makes it look long because they're long licked flames. So if you're not a flame expert, go search out flames. Google the images, look up Ohio, look up traditional, look up Alloway's tribal, look up Alloway style, you name it, they're out there. You're gonna check it out. This guy, Yeah. I don't know about this car to you, but to me, this car looks fast. It just looks like, uh, I'm like, that's all I could think of. So this car we're building, not to compete, but we're building this car to win Street Rod of the Year. So, oh, so good guys. I have, yeah, I have that's no. Going, that's going on right now in Nashville. Yes. They're doing Hot Rod of the Year. Um, and you've competed with that before, no? Yeah, we won that in 2020. Okay. T tell, tell our listeners a little bit about that process because I was trying to tell Shelton on the way down here this morning, I'll come over here so you're not trying to talk across me or whatever, but it's a, it's a cool deal. Like I think like to even be part of the 20 cars or whatever, 10 cars or however many go into that, yep. it's got to feel special just to be part of that group because you're talking about the best cars in the nation, right? Yep. How did it feel for you? What was it like? I mean, did you have all the confidence going in, thinking you're going to win it? You've never done it before. I don't really care if we win it. Understood. So going, going, going into it, it was, um, we went in with a car my customer loved. I was happy with the outcome. Uh, what when was you, it? When you get, when you get the car. It was a 1932 Ford five-window coupe. Okay. So when you get to that level, Brian, I'm just being honest. Yeah. There's a certain level of politics that are involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you get to that level, you're basically setting these cars in front of somebody who d does not build cars for a yeah, living. Yeah. And you're saying, hey, pick the best car. Well, you could like a red car, I could like a blue car, and yeah. then we're gonna get in an argument on yeah. who's gonna win, and right. the guy a little higher up on the food chain is gonna get to pick the winner. Yep. So we went into that with a car that we fell in love with, yeah. and we accidentally won. Yeah. So I mean, did it feel any different? But, but it was you, cool, but, but I mean, it's not. But part of it is you got to drive it across the country from A to B, right? Well, so the year we won was during COVID. Okay. So if you get on YouTube, check out Steadfast Hot Rods. There's a video. We actually did a video submission. Okay. When we did that video submission, that was shortly after that Ken Block, Jim Connor yeah, video yeah, came yeah, out yeah. where he chained down that Mustang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought we're going to chain down this car right in the floor. Yeah. And we blew the back tires off. Smoke was clearing awesome. out of here for about three hours. Neighbors were stopping, thinking the garage yeah, caught on fire. On fire yeah. So there's a set of marks laying right underneath of your car where we chained that baby down and let it eat. Just right here, just let so it go. There was so much smoke in the shop that the drone that was taking the video crashed. It went right down through the false concrete, look at that. <laughs> Tell how hot it got. So Tell that was, that was a blast. 10, 20 cars, right? Yeah, 10, 20 cars, um, ideally, not during COVID. So you go to a destination, you, you do a reliability run about yep. 150 yep. miles, you take yep. the cars out on the drag strip, and then you set them up at the show the next day and then they pick. Yeah, so you're really driving high dollar, I mean, some of these cars are half a million dollars and more, right? And you're driving these high dollar cars and I think that's what makes a great car great. It's actually using it, driving it, yep. getting the rock chips on it. Yep. I mean, if you could afford the first paint job, you can afford the fix up the touch up or yep. whatever, right? And so that's what makes these cars great. I mean, you've taken me on a ride before. Um, we're fixing to take one of the cars out here in just a minute. And we're gonna put Shelton in there with a the camera and uh, you're gonna see it. So check it out. Steadfast stance, steadfast ride right here. This one takes a second to start. It's a little cold natured. That's a flathead for you. What is that thing? What is the motor? What is the why? Is so it's it so an H&H flathead. Yeah. So it sounds amazing, but they're just tough. It's super to, slow. Yeah. 
Yeah, it sounds nuts, but you'd think it would fly, but yeah, it's our first real flight head. So this thing and here so has got an LS. You had H and H build it, and you yes. bought it directly from them. Yep. Is that expensive? Uh, about twenty k, yeah. I think, for maybe two hundred and fifteen yeah. horse. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So that's kind of the difference there with other shops. They don't really make them a handle like that. Yeah. That's the thing, like you built something like that. That's why the performance bagger thing is so hot. It's like. Yeah. No problem. I'm glad we finally got to hang out. <laughs>